so good good evening all of you and welcome to this covid week uh, for today's talk we have uh, professor amitabh bandopadhyay as our speaker uh, amitabh did his uh, phd from albert einstein college of medicine in new york and then followed it up with a post doc at harvard medical school he joined the department of uh, biological sciences and bioengineering in december 2006 he has been working in the area of development biology with focusing on mechanism of bone and cartilage differentiation however today uh, he will be talking on uh, his role in the last 3 years as professor in charge of uh, startup incubation and innovation center so uh, he will be talking about various intervention and techniques and tools which have been developed uh, to deal with covid uh, both in terms of uh, frontline workers as well as for taking care of the patients so i welcome uh, amitabh uh, please write down your uh, queries and question answers on the qa box we'll take it up after this seminar so let's welcome dr amitabh okay uh thank you sir uh, for the kind introduction and uh, i welcome all those who have taken time out uh, during this rather difficult and busy time for all of you to listen to this uh, presentation <coughs> so what i will do is i will of course highlight and talk about uh, the efforts that are that were undertaken and that are being undertaken by the technology business incubator of iit kanpur uh, to fight uh, against covid-19 pandemic but before i get there i would like to build the groundwork by giving you an idea about what siic is what are its capabilities today and that will give you a fair idea about why we can do what we have done in the recent past and what we are undertaking today so the title of my talk is siic a vibrant incubation and innovation ecosystem at the epicenter of nation's fight against covid-19 pandemic we call this an ecosystem that converts ideas into products what we do is we constantly are on the search of ideas and i will spend some time into telling you how we scout for ideas the ideas can be from within the iit kanpur ecosystem that is faculty students uh, alumni or from outside of the iit kanpur ecosystem as long as the idea is brilliant technologically uh, outstanding we bring them into the ecosystem and we incubate them and we support them with all that we got that is technical mentoring through iit kanpur faculty members outstanding equipment infrastructure vast alumni network access to them uh, connecting them with business mentors and industry mentors to ensure that the companies that we incubate they succeed i will show you data that they do succeed and they succeed spectacularly um at present the incubator is uh, operation is uh, overseen by a board this is a little dated slide pardon me for that some of the board members have changed uh, Uh, like uh, it is still chaired by professor avay karandikar uh, director of iit kanpur and it has ex officio members uh, deputy director uh, dean rnd uh, the professor in charge innovation and incubation and members from the alumni like dr sharav sivastav dr srikant sastri and mr srikant sastri uh, from the business world mr manoj kumar and a uh, recent inductee uh, mr rajesh choudhary who is the co-founder of hcl and uh, so before i get going let me give you a quick history 
a historical tour of this IIC. Um, the journey of our incubator, it was started in the year 2000. At that time, it used to be called SIIC, uh, Sidby Innovation and Incubation Center. Uh, it received an endowment fund from Sidby Bank as well as from UP government. And that used to uh, pay for the running expenses of the incubator. It still does. It's a very good source of money for the incubator. Then as the years went by, it added a lot of other programs. You will, in the next few slides, you will understand what these programs uh, do. Um, we received our recognition as a technology business incubator in the year 2011. In 2012, bioincubator was added to the, uh, like a bio component was added to the incubator. And this was done during the time of Professor B.V. Fani when he was uh, the professor in charge of the incubator. Um, and before this, uh, uh, my senior colleagues like Professor Bhande, Professor Rajiv Shekhar, Professor Varman, Rahul Varman, they all uh, tended to this ecosystem. Uh, then after the bioincubator soon came another program called PRISM. The first exit of a company from our incubator came in 2013. Um, the same year we incubated our 50th startup in 2013. Uh, then we added more programs. In 2016, we added a significant uh, program called Invent. It was in collaboration with uh, US, uh, sorry, UK uh, AID and uh, Vilgro, a private incubator. This was uh, brought in in the time of Professor Samir Khandekar. And this one program really changed. Uh, the way we thought about incubation at IIT Kanpur, it introduced a lot of professionalism. We all took a lot of lessons from this program. It helped us a lot. In 2018, uh, we uh, won two major awards uh, nationally and internationally, uh, uh, and we were declared as the best incubator in the country. In the same year, uh, in April, a uh, Section 8 company called Foundation for innovation in research, science, and technology, uh, our first was formed. And the process of transferring over the entire incubation activities from CDB Innovation and Incubation Center, which is, was an intrinsic part of IIT Kanpur, to first uh, has was started in 2018. It is nearly complete. It is not uh, entirely done yet. And soon after uh, this transition, a uh, lot of good things have happened. Uh, we collaborated with Tata Trusts and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2018 to start a, a Agritech incubator, the first in the country, certainly first among all IITs. It's a major program. Uh, we got an in-principle approval for creating a center of excellence uh, from a DST, with DST funding. Uh, we earned a rapid prototyping and testing facility for medical devices supported by BIRAC. We also became a group one center under the technology incubation and development of entrepreneurs tied of Ministry of Electronics and Telecommunication. So that's how the incubator started to take shape the way it is today after we formed first the Section 8 company and uh, yeah. So now I'm showing you certain data between 2018 and today. So in 2018, the total revenue of the incubator was around 3.7 crore. And last year it was 16.5 crores. And this year we aim to reach 32.8 or 33 crores. And uh, we are uh, on the way of achieving that. Now, what does this revenue do? This revenue is used to support incubation activities. As I stated in the very first uh, slide, that we call this an ecosystem where your ideas 
are converted into products. So literally, most of the companies that we incubate, at the time of incubation, they come only with uh, paper and a pencil. The idea is at that stage. And then we nurture them with all the elements that I talked about to develop their prototype, then alpha, beta prototype, market ready prototype, and then eventually to launch them in the market. And, to, and we do have the resources to support the companies at all of these stages. We have funding to just, if you get incubated at IIT Kanpur, you can earn a fellowship anywhere between 30 to 50,000 rupees per month. Um, this is the time when you do uh, pure R&D, prototype development, then we come in with more money uh, to give you uh, for developing the prototype further. Then depending on the success, we can bring in other sources of money, which is called seed funding, which is typically against some equity against the company. And eventually we can uh, fund up to one crore rupees in the form of uh, scale up funding. And we have partner institutions for all of these. And now I'm very happy to inform you that first has its own small corpus. It is uh, small, but uh, its own corpus nonetheless, with which it can support uh, its incubated companies financially. Um, now that uh, first is a, uh, Section 8 company, it's also registered as a, as a charitable institution. And of course, IIT Kanpur's uh, help is there. Taken together, we attract a uh, lot of uh, uh, CSR funding. Uh, last financial year, we got uh, 4.8 uh, crore rupees of CSR funding, uh, which is of, of course used to support our companies. And in the meantime, the team of SIIC has expanded uh, quite a lot. In 2018, we had 12 member team. Now we have a team size of 70. And uh, I have just projected the map to show you that uh, people are from all over the country. And we expect that the team size will go up to 90 by the end of this financial year because two major programs are uh, about to come to the incubator. So that will require additional manpower. And of course, we have started another campus. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, what we have done is that uh, the Technology Business Incubator is now a very professional organization. It's run by uh, seasoned professionals. We have our own CEO, uh, Chief Operating Officer, a full-fledged HR team, um, legal finance and admin team, a strategy team, corporate communications team, and different program teams, including a portfolio management program, where each of the companies are contacted by some member or the other of SIIC every week. This is the way we keep tab on their progress and we get to know what they're doing. So the way it works is that all the other programs like agritech, biotech, uh, non-biotechnology programs, they bring funding and people apply to get access to those funding and then they get incubated. Once they're incubated, then the, you know, the portfolio management team uh, monitors their progress and ensures their success. And they're uh, supported by all the, the other teams like the HR, legal, finance, strategy, all these teams. They, uh, support, they support the companies on their way uh, to success. Um, a brilliant idea was conceived by our new CEO, Dr. Nikhil Agarwal, to induct young kids into uh, SIIC. So what we wanted to do is to get fresh college graduates, BTECs, MTECs, BSc, MSc, any degree, as long as they're willing to work hard, they're sincere and they're smart, uh, our doors were open. So the first time we opened this call for young professionals program or called YPP, uh, we received 600 applications. Uh, we selected 10, eight uh, stayed with us and now they're doing very important job in the uh, organization. Uh, buoyed by the success, 
we floated another application within six months of the first application, uh, first call. And this time, 1,326 people applied, and you can see the profile from the parts of the country where we received application. That means that uh, SIIC, our first, is now a name that is known all over the country, and uh, we received 1,326 applications, and we chose uh, uh, 24 of them. And that's how we now have a 70 member team. It's extremely competent team uh, to get things done. In the meantime, uh, you know, uh, the job of a business incubator is to incubate companies, good ideas. Uh, we started with 34 companies in 2018, and now we have 95 companies at present. And uh, because of the new programs that have come in, our expectation is that it might go up to 180 by the end of this financial year. I'm particularly proud to inform you that of the current 95 companies that are still in the incubator, of these 37 are actually revenue making. And of the graduated companies, of the 74 graduated companies, 44 companies are still running, and of which 33 are revenue making. This is huge considering the global scenario. Typically, only 10% of the startups fail in their first year, while the success rate of SIIC companies is nearly 42%. And by success, we define it as sustainable business beyond first five years since inception. So while SIIC may not be producing uh, an unicorn every other year, but we have created a lot of successful, sustained, uh, businesses that have created job, contributed to the local economy, and most importantly, uh, impacted with uh, tech, uh, impacted people's lives with technologies and uh, they're at the service of the nation. And it is obvious through the accolades that we have earned from all around, from Sachin Tendulkar to Vice President of India to United Nations to CEO of the Niti Aayog, all sorts of newspapers. Uh, SIIC companies are uh, mentioned and receives accolade. I am not aware of any other incubator in the country where incubated companies got an invitation to attend United Nations General Assembly on two successive years. Every year, one company or the other from SIIC is featured in the Forbes uh, 30 under 30. And even the incubator is serving the nation as we speak when it was the Uttarakhand uh, uh, disaster, the, uh, the uh, cloud burst, uh, two of our companies, uh, NDO Air as well as uh, uh, Crystal Technologies, they were not only very helpful, their help was acknowledged in all sorts of news articles uh, by other organizations. Um, uh, so I think, uh, companies and the incubator per se has been uh, in the news for the right reasons for uh, uh, like uh, uh, at least recently. And uh, as you can see that we have now uh, it started to expand abroad as well. We have set up our first collaboration with an international entity that is Singapore India Chamber of Commerce uh, and SIIC we have uh, agreed to help each other's companies to get market access in each other's company and get other kinds of uh, help and now we have a full-fledged international team to expand SIIC's relationships in at least six other nations mostly in Europe. Um, Coming back to the companies, of course, the biggest and best SIIC company by far has been Curadev, started by one of our uh, alumni, uh, Dr. Rajan Surya. Um, it, it is a biopharma startup, and its first anti-cancer molecule was taken over by Roche Pharmaceuticals for $550 million. When Curadev left the incubator, the incubator and IIT Kanpur earned an exit of 1.86 crores. 
Curadip is by far the most successful biopharma startup in the country. Um, our faculty incubated company, GNO, uh, incubated by Professor Bharat Lohani, was acquired by GMR Group. And you all will be proud to know that as we speak today, GNO is the company that is doing the terrain mapping for Mumbai Surat uh, high speed uh, railway connection. <coughs> Weather Risk is another very successful uh, startup uh, from the earlier years of SIIC. Uh, now, uh, ICICI Lombard has taken strategic stake in that company. With the, yeah. um, coming back to recent times, uh, off-grid energy labs, they have developed a new kind of battery technology. And from Godrej to Shell to uh, US uh, niche area company they are all keenly interested in this product and uh, we expect it to raise uh, quite significant capital in the next six months of course pandemic slowed them down a bit but nonetheless NDRF, and we talked about earlier uh, ndrf defense crpf bsf they all are in discussion with NDRF, and uh, it's a faculty incubated company doing very well uh, City Space, an alumnus incubated company, is perhaps the best drone company in its class in the country. And uh, it has been, uh, you know, like uh, entrusted by Survey of India to uh, do uh, mapping for it. Also, uh, as we speak, City Space has been uh, selected by ICMR for delivering vaccines uh, in uh, the Himalayan states of the country. Um, it is based on its earlier work where it did a demo delivery of a, a medicine package from a village in Uttarakhand to the district hospital. And uh, based on that demonstration and uh, further successful demonstrations, it has been entrusted with that work. Uh, one of our current companies, uh, founded by alumni of uh, IIT BHE, uh, they create these very large floating structures, uh, and their structure is now being used by SpiceJet uh, in the Bharat Mala project, uh, where their seaplane uh, maintenance is done on these uh, floating decks. And I can go on and on bragging about our companies, but uh, you know. Uh, Today, the purpose is slightly different. But as I told you that uh, it's a matter of immense pride that uh, 37 out of the 95 current incubated companies are uh, earning revenues. Of course, uh, all of you know about Cool. It's a B2B, B2C company. It is solving a local problem, having a global appeal. Uh, its products are sold nationally, internationally. This is one of those companies that uh, did not come from within IIT Kanpur ecosystem from outside. Um, does fantastic both B2B and uh, like business to business and business to consumer uh, segment business. Uh, and uh, this company is adored by any and many that I know of. Now, with this success on our back, we now wanted to take initiatives to reach out because eventually our aim is to work through the entire uh, chain of uh, academic as well as economic strata, also from villages to hinterlands of India to the metropolitan cities, to create an incubation and innovation ecosystem that is unparalleled not only in India but throughout the world. For that, we are trying to reach out <clears throat> and these are some of the initiatives. Uh, we have started Tech Talks, we have started Clinical Innovation Program, IITK Innovation Fellowship, Deferred Placement Program and a very proactive Faculty Entrepreneurship Program. Um, many of you have attended our Tech Talks. In Tech Talks, what we do is we get professionals from a given domain where they come in, uh, specify exactly what are the kinds of problems that they face in their own professional arena and what are the possible engineering solutions that can help them. And these talks are attended by many of you 
uh, faculty members, students of IIT Kanpur. Good ideas come from that, and uh, the new businesses start from there. Um, the clinical immersion program we started three years back, where we send our undergraduate students to King George's Medical College and University uh, in Lucknow, and the students stay there for uh, three weeks, and then they come back. They gather all sorts of ideas about medical devices. They come back, and then. <clears throat> they try to develop uh, one or the other uh, medical device that they were exposed to in the hospital and at that phase they are guided both by faculty engineering faculty members of iit kanpur as well as doctors of kgmu it has been a very successful program many good ideas uh, came out of it and products are being developed as we speak the iit innovation fellowship we started with csr funding as well as some of our own money where we gather outstanding ideas, outstanding uh, innovators, and give them a handsome fellowship to <clears throat> develop their prototype. I'm just giving you one such example uh, called Neurential. Uh, uh, what this does is it uses uh, a variety of sensors and IoT-based automatic screening system for identifying people that are in early stage of uh, you know uh, neurological disorder which is typically uh, uh, which typically presents as having early tremors mild tremors nonetheless but tremors so uh, this is just one of the many examples of recipients of IDK innovation fellowship we also started our deferred placement program for our own students if a student has a good idea or if the student is simply uh, demonstrated sincerity towards uh, innovation and incubation, we even supply them problem statements to work on it. And uh, you know they're given a fellowship for two years and all support to develop a product. And after all of that, if for some reason they do not like the idea of uh, becoming an entrepreneur, they can still go back and uh, sit for placement. Uh, this has been an initiative of the uh, ESL of uh, IIT Kanpur students and SIIC. Uh, as we speak, the two students have taken up the different placement program in the first year of its offering. And uh, Avina Byron has already been uh, connected with one uh, small SME uh, that works in medical devices uh, business and Dr. Shali Awasthi of KGMU. Together, he is uh, developing a non-invasive device for believable detection. And the idea is that we seed this interest in many students of IIT Kanpur, maybe five, 10 students per year, and uh, nurture some outstanding uh, technopreneurs in the process. Um, now I will tell you about initiatives which go from the very you know foundation of our country of our society to our tribals where we are working with the tribals of Chhattisgarh. they all develop products which are minor forest produce products their outstanding quality very high value however because of the because it is not modernized enough. So the marketing, branding, packaging, quality testing, etc., lacking. So they do not derive value. So we are working with uh, the Tribal Affairs Ministry to train the tribal entrepreneurs in all of these and uh, trying to make an impact in their life. You can see in Chhattisgarh, we are working in so many different places. I can tell you that uh, the Tribal Affairs Ministry is extremely happy with SIIC has been able to do. And initially we were given Chhattisgarh and Kerala, and now we are being requested to take up many other states. Tamil Nadu has already been given to us. Uh, now six other states are on offer to us. It is only for us to reject, but I think we will take it. And this, uh, apart from you know, uh, serving a significant purpose in the society. 
this is also an idea of uh, like uh, uh, an avenue for the uh, for uh, chancing up upon uh, good ideas uh, sometimes there are some absolutely brilliant ideas uh, in this indigenous population and uh, which can be cultivated in the more with the use of modern technology to make outstanding products so we are always looking out uh, with the same uh, you know uh, idea we are also working with the chatisgarh government uh, with the with the chatisgarh minor forest produce uh, department there we are acting as a pmu project monitoring unit and uh, i am very happy to tell you that to get this uh, job we actually uh, outperformed uh, anstan young and uh, the uh, one of the other big five companies and we got the job and it's uh, again a very satisfying job and the Chhattisgarh government uh, is very happy with us. They have recommended our services to Jharkhand government, and uh, this business is likely to expand. Uh, recently, uh, in 2019, uh, our dean R.M.D. Dr. Ayer Harish and our honourable Chief Minister uh, Sri Yogi Adityanath signed a memorandum of understanding. Uh, the idea is to work with the ITIs of UP and upgrade the quality of uh, instructions in some of the ITIs, and more importantly, to bring 50 ITI students of UP to our campus every year and. Uh, train them in the ideas of entrepreneurship because they are very skilled people. So to train them in proper uh, device development or gadget development. And again, uh, these are the students, these are the people who are not in the insulated situation of, uh, who do not have an insulated life as we do within IIT Kanpur. So they all have faced real problems. So they know which are the problems to be solved. They have some of the skills. They do not have the technical know-how. The idea is to get ideas from them, uh, use their skills, combine it with the technological superiority of IIT Kanpur and create products that will be outstanding and will serve the society. In the same manner, we are also working with uh, 20 government uh, engineering colleges of UP where we are training 1,200 students and 100 faculty in uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Again, the same purpose, again, the same end goal that uh, some 20 selected students will be brought to IIT Kanpur, they will be exposed to the ecosystem here. And uh, even if we can create only two successful entrepreneurs out of that, I think it will be uh, uh, considered a success. This is being sponsored by, uh, like through their CSR grant by Rural Electrification Corporation of India. Um, now that we have so many companies, 95 companies, many of them have direct impact in civic lives. So we are now working with several municipal corporations in Kolhapur, in Maharashtra, in North Delhi, and soon uh, there will be another district in Gujarat where we are getting problem statements directly from the municipal corporations. They are funding the companies. Our companies are solving uh, real challenges of these municipal corporations. And uh, in the way they are getting business, they are getting recognition, they are uh, uh, building their business profile so that they can get bigger and uh, larger businesses from the government and private sector. <clears throat> so this way SIIC is uh, making a real impact on the ground. So uh, now we are also uh, branching out in Delhi and CR. Uh, a 2000 square feet uh, incubation center has already been created and a six story building is under construction which will be entirely dedicated to the incubator. And uh, this will allow uh, some of our revenue stage companies 
to open up offices in the NCR region and be closer to the business epicenter and gather more business. So, so what I did in uh, the first 30 minutes is to give you a perspective that how SIIC is creating an ecosystem that is pan-Indian, trying to become national, international, having very high impact, very high success rate. And this is the ecosystem that allowed us to perform what we could during the COVID-19 pandemic. So now I will move and I will talk about uh, you know, how SIIC uh, performed during the COVID-19 pandemic. First, during the first wave last year, um, you, I'll first talk about the the, the the disinfection chamber. It was created by our incubated company in Hyderabad <coughs> called Sanivak. Uh, it was a very successful product. It is still installed at AIG Hospital in Hyderabad. If you go there, you will get to see it. Um, all of you, many of you know about Dr. Sandeep Patil, our alumnus, who started a company called eSpin Nanotech. And now he has started another company called Indima Fibers. And eSpin and Indima Fibers have been working on membranes that could act as anti pollution masks. It is a direct result of Dr. Sandeep Patil's uh, PhD research at IIT Kanpur. And uh, as a smart entrepreneur would do, when COVID 19 struck, he quickly got those membranes assessed for antiviral uh, filtration activities. And uh, this was done at an US laboratory called Densel Lab. Also, they got it tested in Indian laboratory uh, in Gujarat. <clears throat> so the material was right to make uh, N95-like masks. But it was in the middle of the pandemic that he felt the need to make these masks. And obviously, it was difficult to set up a manufacturing facility that will be clean, uh, high-end in the middle of the pandemic uh, out in the city. So he approached IIT Kanpur and uh, with very generous help from the entire administration, Professor Kandikar, Professor Ganesh, the deputy director, Professor Harish, the dean R&D, and Professor Deepu Philip, uh, the professor in charge of the uh, Textile uh, incubator, technology, uh, technology textile incubator. With all of their help and uh, cooperation, uh, we could set up the Swasa production facility within the campus. And today, you know that this is perhaps the most celebrated brand of N95 grade mask in the country, uh, from the Prime Minister to Sashi Tharoor to Mamata Banerjee to every celebrity that you know of. Many of them are using this, and of course, it is the darling of IIT Kanpur campus. Most of us use it, and uh, that has, I'm sure, contributed in a huge manner in saving Indian lives. The other product uh, project that I would like to talk to you about with a sense of pride is our ventilator project. Um, just to give you uh, little backdrop. So on 16th of March 2020, when our Honorable Prime Minister issued an SOS call to all, including the technology business incubators to provide solutions for fighting COVID-19 pandemic, I relayed that call to all the incubated companies. And our company, Noka Robotics, now they are called Nokark Robotics. Uh, they responded saying that they would make uh, ventilators. So, Nokar, the founders are our alumni, uh, Harshit Rathore and uh, Nikhil Kurele. They both graduated, I think, in 2018 and, uh, or 2016. Uh, and they were in the business of developing robots that could clean solar panels without uh, using water. So, you know, I asked them literally that, uh, have you ever seen a ventilator? 
uh, function. This is no, but uh, you know these are uh, electromechanical devices, and uh, that's what the robots are. So if we get to know which mechanical parts to be moved when and how, we will be able to do it. So we uh, quickly called a meeting with uh, some of our colleagues, uh, Professor uh, Samin Khandekar, Professor uh, J. Ram Kumar, uh, Professor Arun Shaha, and some doctors and some industrialists in the business of making uh, air handling units. <clears throat> and together we were trying to brainstorm how to make a ventilator. And initially everybody was suggesting that uh, we should produce a, the ambibag-based ventilator. <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Deepak Padmanabhan, who is a good friend and uh, of uh, me personally and of SIIC, <clears throat> and he is a doctor of Narayan Dizayala in Bangalore, said that uh, either you make a, an ICU invasive ventilator or you don't make a ventilator at all. Because a non-invasive ambulant based ventilator will not serve any COVID patient. Thank God he said that that actually turned out to be true when we eventually went to the government. Um, so Harshit and Nikhil, they're obviously intimidated by the challenge of making a, an invasive ventilator. Uh, neither them nor I had any idea what it involves. So thankfully, we had a very good team of doctors and very enterprising team. Uh, it was not just Harshit and uh, Nikhil. They had uh, Tushar Agarwal, a very recent graduate of IIT Kanpur, 2019 graduate from mechanical uh, B.Tech M.Tech dual degree. And uh, another IIT Kanpur alumnus of Nikhil's batchmate, they were all stuck in their home in Pune because the lockdown was already there. <clears throat> they gathered few parts from a hobby store. You know, like uh, they got a pressure sensor from uh, the hobby store, which is used to make uh, amateur drones. They got the air pump from an aquarium. And with this, they created a prototype within literally 48 hours. And uh, Thanks to Professor Ashutosh Sharma, uh, who is at present the DST secretary. He put me in touch with an international team who were helping uh, people from other countries to develop ventilators. And uh, Nikhil and Harshit presented their ventilator prototype that was produced in last 48 hours to this team. And uh, they were thoroughly impressed. And that's what gave me the confidence and uh, you know, we made an announcement to the world that we are going ahead and making a ventilator. Uh, and it was covered uh, quite broadly. And uh, this is the timeline with which the ventilator was developed. Uh, as you can see, it is done extremely fast from the concept on 23rd March to actually getting this approval uh, from the Director General of Health Services was done in less than 90 days, from 23rd March to 19th June. And uh, <clears throat> today, so this was the team on the NOCA side, Nikhil, Harshit, Tushar, Asin, and this was the doctor's team, Dr. Prachi Sathe uh, of Ruby Hall Clinic, uh, Deepak, and Dr. Dilip Raman, uh, who himself is a very successful innovator and entrepreneur. And they're backed by a task force which worked on mission mode. Um, Srikant and I uh, were, you know, uh, the kind of the coordinators for the whole event, uh, whole project. And uh, Dr. Ajay Chaudhary and uh, Dr. Charles Srivastava, one Padma Bhushan and one Padma Sri, they were the blue mentors. Uh, we had uh, Pawan Chaudhary, who is the chairman of Medical Technology Association of India, and Sanjeev Varma, who is basically an IIT Kharagpur alumnus, but uh, worked with us. Uh, he was the manufacturing guru. He set up the entire manufacturing uh, contracts and all of that. And uh, three brilliant alumni, Rakesh, Yasdeep, Sanjay, 
they all championed different aspects of the project and supply chain was overseen by mr rajesh rajada who was uh, ajay choudhary's colleague at hcl who is to oversee the supply chain at hcl and everything was happening simultaneously as the product development was happening uh, someone was looking at fundraising someone was looking at uh, the regulatory affairs someone was looking at branding uh, someone else was looking at pricing and for all of these there were a huge number of sic uh, team members who were deployed uh, who were all working as small teams each team was headed by one or the other member of the task force senior members of the task force one person from the noca team and uh, the like two three people from siic together uh, every day we met for uh, to, from 12 noon to 2 pm every day over zoom call and uh, that's how we developed this product it was quite a roller coaster journey um, and many of you know that we wrote a book on it and uh, it has been appreciated a lot and now it turns out that uh, the book is getting them more business because people are reading the book uh, falling in love with the product and they are ordering it i am very happy about it um, now coming to the current phase the second wave of uh, covid pandemic which really have taken us all by surprise and it's literally a shock and awe campaign of the virus um, so we are trying our best to serve the community serve the country serve the society so iit kanpur has uh, set up a website called india covid support where we are working with 500 plus volunteers and the core team of siic to provide verified information about oxygen cylinders hospital beds medicine any resources uh, to anybody who would want to uh, know and this effort has been covered by many many newspapers uh, in the country um, on the hard technology side uh, we have launched a manufacturing challenge called mission bharat o2 this is being led by uh, srikant me and rahul who is the head of our strategy team and the idea is that we like we have already onboarded some 15 companies uh, some will be making oxygen concentrators some will be making oxygen plants large scale plants and uh, they are all instead of competing against each other they are all collaborating with each other uh, because there was no oxygen concentrator manufacturer in the country to begin with and uh, together they are getting to the technology readiness level um we iit kanpur is also the nodal agency for the consortium created by the office of principal scientific advisor and through that office we have uh, gotten a uh, site of zeolite which is uh, now extremely rare in the country and in fact in the world so we will start getting our supply next week and the idea is that all these companies will simultaneously start to develop their products and i can assure you that these products will be significantly better than what is available in the market particularly the imported ones the imported ones are not suitable for indian uh, climatic condition because here we have 40 degree centigrade temperature and very high humidity which both of which spoils uh, spoil the zeolite column very fast so uh this uh, the innovative products that have been developed under the supervision of siic they will not suffer from those problems and i can guarantee that so these products can last very long <clears throat> apart from the oxygen concentrators uh, we have identified an innovator in uh, noida uh, he has developed what is referred to as an oxygen generator uh, i will not go into the whole video this is basically a electrolysis based uh, oxygen generator it can produce a flow of up to 8 liters per minute and as you would imagine that this also produces hydrogen and uh, the doctors that this team worked with gave in an input that if there is some hydrogen with oxygen it can help the patients and 
he is delivering that and the preliminary result is very good. We have looked through the literature and in fact, such deliveries are under clinical trial in uh, China and Greece. Uh, so we are right now in uh, consultation with three different hospitals to see if we can get a clinical trial done. We are also in consultation with several industry leaders in Kanpur to see if we can rapidly uh, manufacture this product in Kanpur. And if we can, this will be another line of uh, product that can help not only for the second wave, if it indeed is therapeutic, then it might help uh, people even in the third or fourth wave if they were to come. Um, apart from that, uh, Uh, we have started working on another project in collaboration with Professor Manu Prakash of Stanford University, whom many of you know, our alumnus, world famous for his frugal innovation. He is working with Nishant Agarwal, our alumnus, who is developing very high-end prosthetic uh, limbs. But for this, for the specific COVID-19 patients, uh, together they are developing what is called an OxSev product. So. To explain it uh, in plain language, that oxygen flows continuously from the source, whether it is the cylinder or oxygen concentrator or whatever, or the uh, uh, hospital pipeline. But a patient requires the oxygen only during inhalation. During exhalation cycle, the patient does not take in any oxygen, but the oxygen flows out nonetheless. So what they are developing together is kind of a reservoir while the oxygen will be stored during the exhalation cycle. And then again, it will be used during the inhalation cycle. This, uh, according to calculations, can save up to 35 to 40% of oxygen uh, used in a hospital. So therefore, when we have a scarcity of oxygen, by providing oxygen concentrators, by making large scale oxygen plants, by providing oxygen therapy devices and oxsev, uh, along with the ventilator and masks, uh, we are going to make a large impact on India's fight against COVID. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm very happy that IIT Kanpur and the incubator stood up, rose to the occasion when the nation needed it the most. With that, I will end my presentation here and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amitabh, for a wonderful presentation. And like uh, we learned about the efforts of uh, SIAC in like uh, handling uh, this situation of COVID. Uh, I don't see any questions as such in the question answer. Uh, there is one question, how is revenue related to COVID? So like, uh, if you want to elaborate. Please. Um, well, uh... Just the ventilator project itself attracted a total inflow of around 4.6 crore in the form of uh, CSR funding and government funding. Uh, so that uh, certainly added to the overall revenue of the incubator. But more importantly, because what we could achieve last time, this uh, many, many companies flocked to our incubator because they know that this is a manufacturing mecca in the country. And now, if we succeed again in manufacturing the oxygen concentrators, oxygen plants, and oxygen saving devices, we expect to attract more companies uh, which are into high-end manufacturing. So uh, one of the burning question is like uh, we see in the news that several ventilators are lying even without installation at several uh, hospitals uh, as part of the PM care funding. So uh, my question to you is like, uh, as you told in uh, during your presentation that invasive ventilators are fairly complex. So it, are they so complex to even operate that people are uh, not well trained to handle them? Like, what is the reason? Yes, it is. Like, you need highly trained uh, ventilator technicians because 
uh, depending on the patient's condition, you have to program certain parameters of ventilation. And if you don't do it right, uh, not only it will not help the patient, it might actually harm the patient. Therefore, uh, what the NOCAR team has done is they have created a team of 50 people on contract who provide this ventilator training to whichever hospital they install. So uh, this was the advantage of having this task force because they foresaw this as a problem. So uh, they went in from the very first installation itself with an extensive training on site. Uh, and I guess that was lacking in some of the other installations. Right. So I have another question. How can we drive innovation ecosystem in the development of biotherapeutics? Uh, example, vaccines in the country. This is from Dr. Rao. Well, you know, uh, such kind of innovations, even the, uh, if you think of the ventilators or whatever, they do not come from thin air. They come from solid understanding of the science and then convert, converting them into technology. Thankfully, we have a very, very good biological sciences and bioengineering department. What is needed is the faculty members to a uh, little bit come out of their comfort zone and trust that the incubator is there to help them in every possible manner. They just need to seek it. And uh, together, if we can work on it, we will be able to create an unparalleled ecosystem in the country. There is no doubt about it. Because we have all the right ingredients. OK. Uh, next question is, uh, how hydrogenated oxygen helps patients? Um, really, no, I do not know. Like we have searched through the literature, there are only clinical trial data, not extensive scientific data. But you know, Professor Bhir Singh is a chemist, you know, like chemistry uh, you know, giant, so I should not uh, even try. But it is the two things are being speculated. One is that. Hydrogen is apparently acting as an antioxidant, which is uh, helping the patients. The other is that uh, it is somehow lowering the inflammation. Uh, and how it is doing that is not immediately clear. But uh, you know, like uh, right now, the house is on fire. Therefore, uh, you know, instead of uh, trying to understand if it uh, if the clinical trial done rigorously if it turns out to be true then we should deploy it for patients but it is a very interesting scientific question and we must explore it okay so moving on to the next question uh, the question is how are artificial intelligence and internet of things helping in vaccination research and building ventilators um, in ventilator building, it is not a big deal. What, uh, <clears throat> what is though happening is that a lot of data from ventilators is being collected. See, like uh, there is a technological problem there that if you want a ventilator to transmit data, uh, that itself can create interference with other devices in the hospital. And it can malfunction. Therefore, doctors do not want to take these chances. Like initial models of NOCAC uh, V310 was IoT enabled, which we disabled uh, on request of the doctors. So I do not know exactly where that will be going anytime soon. But for vaccine research, again, I am not an expert. Uh, Professor Jandhan Rao is there. And uh, yesterday, the Bindu gave a fantastic talk. Uh, you know, it will be a lot to do with the structure of the antigens and uh, trying to deduce which part will be likely to be most antigenic, uh, devising antibody against that and stuff like that will be possible. Maybe yeah. genome sequencing and things like that. Uh, genome sequencing, more importantly, protein structure determination. Nowadays, uh, at least uh, Google AI could 
deduce structure of a protein, uh, which nobody thought would ever be possible, but it is actually possible. So, you know, those kind of work one can uh, delve into. Right. So let me ask a general question to you. Like, um, I'm like having seen very closely the SIC, I see more and more people, even from IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, and other IITs, trying to incubate their startups in IIT Kanpur. So what is that magic that you have had? Well, the word is out that IIT Kanpur is the most conducive place to help uh, the incubated companies. And that credit actually does not go to me or to the SIIC team, but rather to all my faculty colleagues and the institute administration. At every instance, they have gone the extra mile more than that to help these uh, incubated companies. So these are young, ambitious kids with a lot of dreams. All they need is, you know, half an hour, an hour in a week, someone who is experienced to tell them that, you know, you can do it. A uh, little bit, uh, you know, uh, hand-holding and that's it. Uh, Yes, we are now getting companies from all sorts of places. So let me congratulate you for all the hard work and your team for taking it uh, to several miles. And I wish you further success. And I thank all the audience for taking out their time. Uh, please come back tomorrow. We, we are going to have Dr. Vishal Kumar uh, Keshi from AIG Hospital Hyderabad. He's a well-known pulmonologist and he will talk about patient care during COVID time. And I think uh, that will be very useful for all of us. So thank you, Amitabhu, and thank you, everyone. Have a yeah. great evening. Thanks, Tarun. Thank all of you. Thank you all, all for attending. Uh, and please do come to SIIC. SIIC needs a whole lot of help from all of you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye, you. Bye. Bye.